the name that you gave man that man should call God Father that you will hear from your holy heavens Amen. and you answer us according to the saving strength of your right hand Amen. reign supreme over this land O oh God Amen. Father we come before you that you will enlighten our darkness Amen. that we will not work at cross purposes against God Let your word be a lamp unto our feet. Amen. Let it shine the light onto our path. Amen. Help us to navigate through all the slay of men and cunning craftiness of politicians. And know the counsel of the Lord. Amen. Father, we lay down every apprehension, every sense of bigotry, every assumption, every presumption. And we ask, oh God, that you furnish us with incontrovertible facts. Give us a sensing in our hearts to know which way to go. Amen. Father, this is the land you gave us. The rod of the wicked will not continue to rest upon the lot Amen. of the righteous. That the righteous may not put out his hand to do evil. Father, act swiftly on our behalf. Amen. Bless my brothers and my sisters. Amen. Because these are the lovers of God, the lovers of the nation. I say, Lord, please bless them. Amen. Let us all be a part of the new Nigeria. Amen. Glorify your name, O God. Blessed be the Lord. Now and forevermore. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Can you clap your hands, oh ye people, for the God of Nigeria? Hallelujah. He's our king. Hallelujah. And help me bless our dear Grace Corral to my left and to my right. For once again, a job well done. Can you help me? Greet your neighbor and say, you are going to be a part of the new Nigeria. I sense some people here are going to get appointments in the new Nigeria. Help me tell your neighbor, you are going to eat the fat of this land. Touch yourself, hey, I am going to eat. Not the bone, not the leftover. The fat of this land in the name of Jesus say amen to your own prayer hallelujah clap for the Lord one more time I need my flag from my office my flag glory to God I said glory to God help me tell your neighbor you will not die you have suffered enough oh. the new Nigeria is about to happen your portion is very large in the new Nigeria. Eh? Your enemy will not eat your portion. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to thank you all for coming to church. These are the lovers of God and the lovers of Nigeria. And um, it's going to be a wonderful evening. And I know the sweet of the Lord is here with us. I'm trusting God that a lot more people are coming and um, it, the, by the time we're done today, we will know what God is saying. Say amen to that. Amen. Let me get pastor's announcement quickly out of the way. I want to remind you that this Saturday at 9 a.m., we're going to launch out into the Father's blessings that will be delivered upon this house by our dear Pastor Femi Atoebi, Saturday the 24th at 9 to 11. I want to say something to you, that unless you get the blessing, you will struggle. Did you hear what I said? Unless you get what? The blessing, you struggle. How many of us are tired of struggling? There is an oil that is going to be released on Saturday. 
And if you love somebody, honestly, bring the person. It is Saturday morning, Sunday morning, and Sunday evening. And how many of you know that three is the number of God? We're going to get a complete blessing in Jesus' name. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Put it right here. God is the God of Nigeria. Glory to God. Now, this is Grace Assembly, and at Grace Assembly, we inspire people to become the very best before God and amongst men as they experience transformation through the ministry of the Word of God. Amen. Thank you. Don't worry about this. Take it off. So how many of you have your PVC? Put down your hands. How many of you do not? Why? Sorry, ma. Your photograph is there. The card is not there. I bind every... <laughs> You know, this is one time I want you all to get excited at the opportunity to vote. God bless you. It's not like it used to be that voting was a pain. It's not like it used to be voting it was like, ah, I, I, it's not, they will do whatever they want to do. This time, it's not going to be so. If you're a member of Grace Assembly, listen to me. You are going to vote this time. Yeah. And our vote is going to count. Yeah. And every attempt to rig anything is going to end in disgrace. Yeah. Because angels are being released into Nigeria. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. I want you to know that it's a showdown. It's a showdown. How many of you sense that we can't afford to get it wrong this time? And that's why we're here this evening. Can you bring up the slide about this political discussion, which was going to, is going to end up in some powerful prayers? This is what I say. How do you know how to pray when you don't have information about the situation? Prayer is not gibberish. Prayer is not just garbage in, garbage out. Prayer should be intelligent communication with an intelligent God. Glory to God. How many of you here have dual nationality? You have another passport legitimately outside of a Nigerian passport. Shall they get out of this place? Drive her. But Bele is worrying me. Go, 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 go. Because if you take time now, you rush to British Embassy. They carry helicopter, carry you. They go. Anybody with dual nationality, when the thing becomes sweet, we won't let them come back to Nigeria. Look at the way she's laughing. <laughs> Anybody else with dual nationality, I tell you to leave this place now. Let all the Nigerians say amen. amen. Africa is the next frontier. And Nigeria is the center of Africa. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We're here. No, this is not the one we want. We sing this song. We're here to address the state of the nation. Can I tell you something? You are important. I don't like that kind of thing. Okay, you are not important. I said you are important. Say, I am, I am important. Glory to God. This time around, Nigeria, we know that we're important. You know, I told you that God says it's a year of ordained surprises. If they thought we're not important before, watch what's going to happen. Praise God. But you can rubbish your importance by not having your voter's card. 
Can you imagine when we shape the new Nigeria? How will you be able to say, I was not a part of them? History is going to be recorded. The voters list has been published. Your children will look at it. Do you know it's a computer age? You Google voters list, everything will come out. Your children will ask you, sir, daddy, where is your name there? You see? You want to have a heart attack. Praise God. All right. We're going to address the state of the nation through a political discussion which will engender enlightenment. The word enlightenment means you have light. The Bible says that we should seek wisdom. We should attain understanding. You cannot do, you cannot get to understanding when you have no knowledge. And we are known to run around with half baked information or poor information. So tonight, I'm soliciting your support to contribute any valid information you have to add to the little we know so that we can have a balanced information base upon which we're going to take a decision. And let every man thereafter be fully persuaded in his own mind how he ought to vote. I am not going to tell you who to vote for. But by the time we're done, it will be obvious to all of us because the Spirit of the Lord is here. Can I hear you say amen? amen. All right. Proverbs 18 verse 2. I want to read Proverbs 18 verse 2 to set the mood. I've had a serious discussion on my phone. That's why I came into the hall late because I'm calling all the movers and shakers. I'm getting very serious information. Proverbs 18 verse 2 says, A fool has no delight in understanding, but he delights in expressing his own heart. What state is a heart that has no understanding? Can you please bring this up, the scripture, please? I don't need any video today, please. The issues are too serious. A fool has no delight in understanding, but he delights in expressing his own heart. I'm asking the question, if understanding is not in the heart and you're expressing that heart, what are you expressing? Emptiness? Somebody help me out. Foolishness. A fool does not seek understanding. He does not gather information, but he's always projecting his heart. And that's why some people, when you're talking, I don't want to listen. The message translation of the Bible says, fools care nothing for thoughtful discussion. Can you read that on the screen? Let's read it together. Fools care nothing for thoughtful discussion. All they do is run off at the mouth. Verbal diarrhea. Thoughtful discussion. It didn't say discussion. It didn't say gistful discussion. Thoughtful discussion. And that's why we're here today. Because we're not fools, we're wise people. Amen. 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 How many of you are here that you really like to find out some things you don't know? How many of you like to ask some questions? Trust me, I'm going to be asking some questions. Because there are some things I'm not clear about yet. And then, I have a slide here. I promise to bring this up to you. The one that says, I have made up my mind. Don't confuse me with the facts. You can bring that one up. I have made up my mind. Does that make sense to you? I have made up my mind. Don't confuse me with the facts. Somebody said that. And his name is Earl Landgrip. He was a senator in the time of the Watergate trial of Nixon. Richard Nixon. When they wanted to impeach the president, he said, even if you're going to kill me, he says, I have made up my mind. Don't talk to me about the facts. I'm going to support Nixon. And that's what some people do. It is called bigotry. 
extreme and foolish and baseless taking of a position. I hope no such person will be found amongst us. I am a follower of Christ, not just because somebody said so. I have checked the information. So I am resolute in my following Christ. It's not a baseless bigotry. No, it's based on what I know. We're here to find out what we need to find out so that we're able to make up our minds. True or false? Good. None shall be found to be like a land grave amongst us in Jesus' name. I want to establish what we're doing again because some people are just too spiritual for me. If I don't quote the Bible, they say I'm not a pastor. All right. So Psalm 18 verses 28 to 29 Psalm 18, 28 to 29. You might as well use the whole screen for the scriptures. Psalm 18, 28 to 29. Read with me. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop. Who is there? Can you take off the video? Give me the whole screen. I'm here to do some serious business. Two verses, please. I've got only one nation and I aim. Put the two verses together. I'm not in the mood for foolishness. This is war. Praise God. All right. Let's read that. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop. And by my God I can leap over a wall. The psalmist says the Lord will enlighten. I said it's a discussion and enlightenment. You will enlighten my darkness. Darkness does not have to be total for there to be darkness. I'm not suggesting that anybody here is in total darkness. But there are pockets of darkness when it comes to our information base. May the Lord enlighten our darkness in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then the psalmist says, for by you, when you enlighten my darkness, I can run against a troop. What I'm saying to you is that the posture you are going to take you must be so sure about it that you may have to run against a troop. When God enlightens your darkness, it does not mean you won't face resistance. When God enlightens my darkness, I will, can then be strong enough to run against a troop and leap over a wall. So this thing we're talking about is first a deep knowledge-based evidential conviction. You're, conv you're convicted. You know that you know that you know. So it doesn't matter who is on the other side. Even if a troop is against me, when I know the truth and I know where God stands, then let us go. It says I can leap over a wall. There are hindrances and obstacles that will come up. But we're going to win this battle. Amen. We have already even won the battle. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to read something else to you. But should I leave that later? I'll leave that to later. The question now is, how many parties are in the political arena now? The answer is not two. You only know two. <laughs> You see, that is bigotry. <laughs> you know? I think there are five of them. Twelve. Twelve. Who are the remaining seven? <laughs> no, there can't be twelve. I mean, the ones that are presidential. 
do you know do you know up to five presidential candidates there are 12 but they're not disciples <laughs> but they're 12 on this side how many presidential candidates do you know well, I know four. you try seven no. the rest of us how many do you know two. I know no four I know four okay how many people know only two presidential candidates here And there's a woman contesting. We have a female contester. Uh, yes. I try. The next thing you will tell me is Deborah. I don't mean to be bad, but this battle is between two people. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not going to cast my vote <laughs> on number 11. It ain't going to work like that. Praise God. All right, the first thing I want us to understand is that there are two levels of voting, the state and the national. How many of you think because I support this party, any of the elections, I'm going to vote that party? How many of you think so? No. So it's okay to vote state one party, national, another party. A round of applause for yourselves. I am gratified. Because I have met people, blind loyalty, even if they put a monkey eh, on a state platform, they will vote for the monkey. Either an umbrella or a broom. Whatever. Praise God. If you had to choose between an umbrella and a broom, <laughs> which one will you choose and why? 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 No, eh? Because of rain. It was not a rainy season. You see, what, what makes an umbrella more useful than a broom? Come, come, come. Come and answer the question. Give him... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Both rainy season and dry season, you can use an umbrella. Oh, both rainy season and yes, dry, dry season, you can yes. use an umbrella. Yes. Okay, broom, don't you use the rainy season and dry season too? No, 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 I disagree. I disagree. Yes, yes, yes. Give them the microphone, that side. So you know they sweep your house during the rainy season. Pastor. You use a hoover. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In your village, they, they use Hoover for your village. Have... Oh, try, oh, try, you try. Uh, praise the Lord. We have some local brooms that we use in rainy seasons. Mm -hmm. Long, and you hold the handle and you sweep the... So when your house is dirty, you use your umbrella no, to we, sweep we, it. We keep two types of broom. One for the, the normal... No, I'm saying the people the that job. chose umbrella. When your house is dirty, you use umbrella to sweep it. Ataya. And when it's raining, when it's raining, you took, you take your, uh, your broom and cover your 